It's the Science Show with Professor Noah and his assistant Brian. Yes, it's Professor Noah He knows a lot, you know. Today, the professor will demonstrate why our body needs more oxygen when we exercise. Oxygen, yes. Every time we take a breath into our lungs, we breathe in oxygen. Now you can't see or smell oxygen, but it's really important. Like how important? Like really, really important. Ooh. Most things need oxygen to stay alive. Things like blue whales. Yes. Things like red squirrels. Yes. Things like this microwave. Yeah. No, no, not a microwave. When we breathe oxygen into our lungs, our blood carries it around our body to help us do all the things we need to do. All the things? Yes. Like thinking? Yes. Like juggling? Yes. Like doing a handstand? Yes. I'm using my perfectly conditioned body to demonstrate how we need more oxygen when we do strenuous exercise. Let's speed this thing up a bit. No problem, Professor! So, as I was saying, oxygen helps make our muscles move. A little bit faster, Professor! Absolutely! What I want to show you, the more exercise we do... Faster! Yes! The more... The more oxygen! Uh, uh, so what the professor is trying to say is that uh, the more exercise we do, the more oxygen our muscles need. So we breathe faster to get more oxygen in. Isn't that right, professor? We need to breathe faster because our muscles need more oxygen to work harder. Yes! Stop it! And that's all from us! Are you okay there, Professor? The Body Brothers! Brilliant! Body Fast! Yeah! Did you know that most of the time you don't even know you're breathing? It happens without you even thinking about it, while you're awake and while you're asleep. You breathe in and out over 20,000 times every day. That's enough air to fill a van. Brilliant body fast. It's the science show with Professor Noah Lott and his assistant Brian. Yes, Professor Noah Lott. He really does know a lot, you know. Today, the professor will look at something special about the digestive system. The digestive system, that's where farts come from. What's he doing to Brian? Uh, why am I up here again, professor? Because, dear boy, I want to demonstrate one of the most fascinating things about the human body, that it can eat upside down. Now, I must say from the outset, that it is not advisable to do this yourself. It's not recommended, comfortable, or good for your tummy. In other words, do not try this at home. But it is okay for me to do it with him. But it'll just fall out of my mouth, Professor. Aha! That's what you think. Now take a bite. Remember, the Professor and his assistant are trained professionals. Do not try this at home. Now swallow. <laughs> Hey, it's gone down! Or should that be up? Even though he's upside down, the food is on his way to his stomach. That's amazing! Oh, how does it happen? Allow me to explain. Let's pretend this is our digestive system. Here's the mouth at one end and the bottom at the other. But if you're upside down, the mouth is now at the bottom, and the bottom at the top. Just like my assistant here. Professor, I really need to go. We'll use this as our food. Although you should never normally eat a mango hole. Professor, please. I'll just pop it in the mouth down here. So, how does the food get from down there to up here? 
Watch. Just as my hands are squeezing the tube, pushing the mango, those muscles in your digestive system push the food through your body, even if you're upside down, until... Professor, I need to go to the toilet! Then why didn't you say so? Then... Pop! Your poop comes out the other end. And that's how your body can eat upside down. I'd leave that a few minutes, Professor. The Body Brothers! Brilliant! Body fat! Yeah! Did you know that your stomach can stretch depending on how much food is in it? And some stomachs can even get as big as this. Brilliant! Body fat! It's the Science Show with Professor Noah Lott and his assistant, Brian. Yes! It's Professor Noah Lott. He knows a lot, you know. Today, the professor will test what happens to your heart when you exercise. Did you hear that? It's all about the heart. For a healthy body, you need a strong, healthy heart. Today, I'm using my coaching skills to test my assistant's heart when he exercises. <laughs> Shush! This is a serious experiment. My assistant is wearing this heart rate monitor, which can tell me exactly how fast his heart is beating. 60 beats per minute. Perfectly healthy. Please stand on this treadmill. Is it safe, Professor? Yes, it's safe. Mm -hmm. Let's see what happens. When the treadmill starts, you've got to run. Oh, well, you could have told me. When my assistant runs, his legs need more energy, so his heart pumps more blood to them. This means that his heart rate, the speed at which his heart is beating, goes up. Your heart rate is now 80 beats per minute, but I think we can make it go even higher. How oh, I don't know, Professor! 90 beats per minute. Oh. Well, let's see what happens when you have to run really fast. 120. It's, it's too fast. 140. 150. And that is the end of my experiment. The Body Brothers! Brilliant body fat! Yeah! Did you know scientists have discovered that laughter can make your heart beat faster, making it stronger <laughs> and more healthy? So laughing is good for the heart! <laughs> Science Show with Professor Noah Lott and his assistant Brian. Yes, it's Professor Noah Lott. He knows a lot, you know. Today, the professor will show how dizziness is caused by something going on inside our ears. He's talking about ears. Yes. Our ears are not just for hearing. Oh no, they are also the reason why we sometimes get dizzy. I shall now demonstrate using my assistant and this special revolving device. Uh, professor, is that a spinning chair? I hope you're not going to spin me round and round. That can make me very dizzy. Sit on the special revolving device, please. Now, allow me to explain. Deep inside our ears, there are tiny tubes filled with liquid like the water in this glass. When my assistant moves, 
So does the liquid in the tubes inside his ears. Whee! Right now, it's telling his brain that he's spinning around. Ooh. I shall now increase the speed. The liquid inside my assistant's ears is now moving very quickly. Make it stop! But look what happens when I stop the spinning device. <laughs> Can you step off, please? Even though he's no longer spinning, my assistant's brain thinks he is. And that's what's making him dizzy. So dizzy! The liquid inside his ears is still moving and sending messages to his brain saying, you're still spinning. Drink of water? As we can see, dizziness can take time to wear off. The Body Brothers! It's The Science Show with Professor Noelot and his assistant, Brian. Yes! It's Professor Noelot. He knows a lot, you know. Today, famous scientist Professor Noelot is here to talk about hair. Hair! Yes! Today I'm going to answer one of the most fascinating questions in science. Why do we humans only have hair on certain parts of our body, while other apes... Come on! While other apes are covered in hair. I told you, put on the head. I can't wear it. It's too uncomfortable, Professor. Now, once upon a time, millions of years ago in fact, we humans were covered in thick hair. Just as apes like this one still are today. <gasps> professor. Put the I... head on. Well, Professor. I can't do this unless you're wearing it. Now, where was I? Ah yes, long ago, humans were covered in hair. But then, they started to walk and run around on two feet. And all that hair made them too hot. So... Professor! 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 It's too hot in here, I'm roasting! <sighs> all right then, leave it off. Just stop interrupting me. So when, over time, we humans started running around on two feet to stop us getting too hot, we lost most of our thick hair. So us gorillas kept our hair, and you humans lost most of your hair. Well, how come you kept the hair in your head? I was just getting to that. To protect our head from sunburn, and to stop us from getting too cold, we kept the hair up there. So why does your head need so much minding? Because my brain is in there. And the human brain is much bigger and more developed than the gorillas. So we need to look after it very carefully. Ah, human intelligence. Such a precious gift. 